Oh, hi. Yeah, I just got back from Oregon. After spending two weeks searching the state stem to stern for a northern pygmy owl. Spoiler alert, I didn't find it. But the search was great. Oregon, you're wonderful. It all started when we flew into Portland and rented a camper van named Surreal. One week ago, I woke up in this van in Oregon, along with my wife, Sandy. We picked Oregon partly to chase two birds we've never seen, northern pygmy owl and mountain quail. But really, it's because Oregon is one of the few states that we've never birded in. In fact, neither one of us has ever been here. But now we have over 600 miles so far, and we're on the way to Bend, Oregon today. In the last seven days, we've seen Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, Crater Lake National Park, Klamath Lake, and Klamath Marsh National Wildlife Refuge. But in the last week, we still have not seen a northern pygmy owl or a mountain quail. And in my entire life, I have never seen anything like this. We're inside a volcano. 600,000 years ago, Newbury Volcano started erupting, and it's been burping ever since. The eruptions cleared a caldera five miles wide and now contains two lakes with the volcano cone and crater right in the middle. And then this happened. Only about 1,300 years ago, the last big eruption happened. There was a lot of silica in the molten rock that poured out of one fissure. As it oozed out of the earth, it slowly spread over 700 acres to become what is known as Big Obsidian Flow. Usually, when molten rock solidifies, it crystallizes. But if it's got a lot of silica and it cools very slowly, it turns into natural glass, obsidian. There's a whole mountain of it here. And geologically, it's really, really young. Looks like it was just dumped here yesterday. A one mile trail loops around the top. Before you come up here, you're warned not to wear sandals or open toed anything. No pets either. Their paws could be seriously hurt. You're literally walking on glass. For centuries, people have been coming to this spot to collect obsidian. It can be flaked, shaped, and sharpened into a host of weapons and tools. Meanwhile, Canada Jays are waiting for us to lunch next to the parking lot. Trust me, if there's a picnic table anywhere in the northern forest from Oregon to Maine, these guys are waiting for a handout. They're not the only Jays here either. Stellar's Jays aren't just loud. They're everywhere. No wonder this is a popular tourist area. It's got great lodges. It's got a really fantastic campground. It's got these two lakes, Paulina and this one, East Lake, and it's gorgeous. And this time of year, the lakes are filled with ducks. Again, mostly American coots. There are mallards and a few other ducks. From the backside of the Newbury Volcano on Cascades Lake Scenic Byway, you can really see all the recent volcanic activity. That black area was the lava flow from 7,000 years ago. All those little bumps, they're ash cone volcanoes, every one of them. The whole area is still a volcanic hotbed. This caldera is still an active volcano and could erupt at any time. Oh, four days ago, somebody posted on eBird a northern pygmy owl in this spot right here. But I think it's moved on. Today may have started routinely, except Tumalo State Park is right next to the Deschutes River. And right next to the Deschutes River, great walking trail, full of birds. Even in autumn, the towns and solitaires are singing their brains out. And I don't get to see these guys in the East Coast. If these towns and solitaires aren't some of the most vocal birds on the continent, as if that wasn't lucky enough, there's a mixed foraging flock right where we park. Evening gross beaks, pygmy nut hatches, mountain chickadees. I don't want to leave. But we got to get up to Mount Hood this morning. You know you're welcomed when a Clark's Nutcracker turns out to greet you. Mount Hood is the tallest mountain in Oregon. It's also the most active volcano. Seismologists estimate that there is something like a 3 to 7% chance it will erupt in the next 30 years. Mount Hood is also famous for Timberline Lodge. 
This is where Stephen King's The Shining was filmed with Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. I checked the rooms. No ghosts. No red room. I'm a little disappointed. This is a sad day. We have to turn in the van and pick up a rental car in Portland to go do the coast. We've got a little time in Portland, so let's see what we can find. I wouldn't have thought that one of my best birding adventures would be inside Portland. But look at this. The Smith and Bybee Wetlands Natural Area. It's drier in the fall, of course. A lot of American pippets passing through right now. Oh, no. There's a dozen pectoral sandpipers out here and one sharp-tailed sandpiper. My first Oregon lifer is a bird that doesn't even breed in the United States. And before I could get off the scope and onto the camera, they flew off. Still need mountain quail and northern pygmy owl, and both were seen in this area this week. This is a spiritual retreat. The public is invited to walk the trails, but I'm not going to film here. It uh, feels a little intrusive. I will tell you, I had 10 mountain quail right over there. They saw me before I saw them because they went right up. Finally, we're on the coast of Oregon. Leaving Astoria at daybreak, heading for Newport midway down the coast. We're doing a boat trip out of Newport tomorrow, but that's a different tale. Okay, I didn't see this coming. Tillamook Bay is a known hotspot for birding. But I did not know about Kilches Point Preserve. What a fantastic trail. If I lived here, I'd visit every day. The bush tits are local, and there's a bunch of Pacific wrens in here. The golden crown sparrows are just migrating through. And today is crawling with fox sparrows also just passing through. Then you get to the beach. It's the shallow end of Tillamook Bay. And waterfowl collects in here in big numbers. And this time of year, the shorebirds are really coming through. Greater yellow legs. Black-bellied plovers. And who knows what else. I wish I had time to stay here for hours. But the birds aren't even the best part of this trail. Interpretive signs tell an amazing story of the Tillamook tribe that lived here and the settlers that came later. And like everywhere else, the Tillamook were treated unjustly. But some of the early settlers got along fine with the tribe. Joseph Campion was welcomed by Kilchis himself, the Tillamook chief. Warren Vaughn was 35 years old when he married 15-year-old Harriet Trask. They had 15 children. Wow, what could the Tillamook area ever do to top this? I swear I did not know about this place. Tillamook Creamery is the retail outlet for a hundred year old farmer's co-op. It's the LL Bean of milk solids. Nobody drives by this place. This is after tourist season and the place is still packed. I'm buying, what do you want? One scoop or two? One of the prettiest spots on the coast is just beyond Tillamook, Cape Mears. The views are spectacular, or so they tell me. Well, I can see the lighthouse from here.
A lot of people are walking by, but I think we're the only people noticing the sparrows gathered along the path. Kate Mears has a lot of surprises, including the tallest Sitka spruce in Oregon. It's 144 feet tall, 15 and a half feet wide, 48 feet around, and maybe 800 years old. And it's not the only unusual tree here. You've probably never seen a tree as weird as this one, the octopus tree. Nobody knows what happened to this Sitka spruce. It has no central trunk, and the limbs stretch out nearly 16 feet before stretching up. Might have been something natural, might have been shaped by playful kids 300 years ago. We'll probably never know. Supposedly there are seals and sea lions and seabirds on Pillar Rock out there. This may be the best view I've never seen. Day 11. This is the day of the big pelagic trip out of Newport into the Pacific Ocean to see what birds I've never seen. Uh, either this is going to be really great and I'll do a separate dedicated video on it or it'll be a total bust and I'll never mention it again. A nice pink foot close. Yesterday was awesome. Four lifers. It was so good. I'll do a separate video on it and I'll post a link at the end of this. I am really grateful about yesterday because today's weather is awful. No point sticking around here. There's a spot 90 minutes from here, a place called Mary's Peak, that is supposed to be really good for northern pygmy owls. A bunch of them have been seen just in the last two weeks. So let's go give that a shot. Northern pygmy owls. Remember them? Part of the reason we're in Oregon? 12 days of trying and haven't found one. Mary's Peak is the most likely place to get them. If the weather improves, There's so much wind, rain, and fog up here that I can barely make out a red-tailed hawk right overhead. But the next time I visit Oregon, I am coming back here. This place is awesome. Tonight, we'll spend our last night on the road in Corvallis. In the meantime, we're going to hit as many national wildlife refuges between here and Portland that we can. We've only got a few minutes here, just passing by really, long enough to enjoy some chestnut back chickadees. And is this the longest you've ever seen a Townsend's warbler cooperate? He's just begging to have his picture taken. Yeah, I know, it rains in Oregon. Except that despite the rain, there's not a lot of water in October. This is the season for managing and creating duck-friendly habitat. Draining, burning, prevents overgrowth and invasive plants and wetlands. The ducks are still here though, just not where we can see them. That's something I'd like to know more about. It's normal to have wetlands off limits in a national wildlife refuge to protect the waterfowl. But a lot of the wetlands here in the west aren't even visible at a distance. In the east, especially along the Mid-Atlantic NWRs, they're walkable and drivable right past the water's edge. No complaints, just curious. Meh, it's still fun. And that coyote agrees there's still lots of wildlife in this wildlife refuge. The road back to Portland goes right through the Willamette Valley, famous for its pinots. There is a winery every two miles. Now, I could keep looking for owls, or I can visit a few wine tastings and raise a toast to Birding, Oregon.